Welcome to Finance with Avery. In this video, I'm going to go over what I think are the top five online checking accounts in 2023. And first, before we jump into the specific accounts, we're going to go over the common features. So pretty much requirements that have to be met to make it on the list of mine like this and common features that they all share. Really important features. And so we'll get into that first. And then I'll go over the pros and cons for each of the accounts. And these pros and cons, they're what I think of as pros and cons. Some of these pros may not be as much pros to you or the cons may not be as much cons to you. And in, in importance, they're not ranked in important so something that i say third or fourth may be more important to you than the first thing i said about the pros so different people have different priorities so when you're looking for an online checking account what's important to you may not be as important to somebody else or me personally so you know you may be looking for an account that has you know a lot of atms and you don't care about other things about the account interest or anything like that or you may be looking for an account that has you know certain features that the other one doesn't have maybe like you know cash back or something like that so i'm going to go over what i think are the pros and cons for each of these accounts and then also i'm going to look at some of the reviews in the app stores because with the online checking account it's very important that the mobile app is great because that's how you're going to be interacting with the account often right there so for me personally if i have an online and i do have an online checking account i'll tell you which one of these i use and why i use it but it's really important to me that the app is very efficient you know runs great has nice features because that's how i'm going to be interacting with the checking account the most you know nowadays you know everything's on the go you're on the go you know you're at this place at that place you're on your phone you know you're not going to log around your computer everywhere. i mean i take my computer often with me but i'm not going to log into it on the desktop just to fuse something about my checking account right there on my phone bam so it's really important that there's a nice app to go along with the checking account and that's part of why i rank these accounts as well and the number one account is actually an account that's i think is number one on this list for several re reasons but it's not the account that i use personally i use the i believe number yeah number three on this list right here is the account that i use so and i'll get into that and everything Thing. But first, before we jump into the pros and cons of the accounts, let's go over the common features. And now what they all have in common. First up here, they are all FDIC insured, which is very important. FDIC stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is an independent agency created by Congress to maintain stability and public confidence in the nation's financial system. So what they do is they protect customer deposits, typically up to $250,000. So if the bank goes under, bankrupt, something happens with the bank, you know, and we've been seeing that lately on the news, they will protect customer deposits up to $250,000. Now, some financial institutions, they provide more of the FDIC insurance by spreading money around, basically spreading your deposits around to other different banks to get like up to 2 million um, FDIC insurance. So, but typically it's $250,000 that that's covered. And you definitely want to be banking with the financial institution, with the bank that has that FDIC insurance. So all of these banks right here for these checking accounts, how are FDIC insured? And next up, there is no monthly maintenance fee for any of these accounts. So there's no, you know, $2, $3 just to have the account, you know, nothing like that. No monthly maintenance fee for any of these accounts now also all of these accounts come with a debit card very important to have a debit card with the online checking account because you want to be able to swipe you know whether you're paying for something whether you want to get access to your cash at an atm or anything like that so all of these accounts have a debit card that is provided for free and now the next thing all of these accounts have in common is that they do have ATM access nationwide. So there's not just ATMs in a certain state or anything like that. All of these accounts have ATMs across the nation in the United States. Now, some of them have more than others for sure. And I'll go over roughly some of the numbers that they have, what they've stated on their website about how many ATMs they provide or support. And so, but all of these have ATM access nationwide. And this is something that's going to be a little bit more personal for some people because you may want to see specifically in your area how many of ATMs are available just because, you know, nationwide you can't really assume like oh there's gonna be a lot in the town or city you know where i live at so it's really important if that's important to you to have you know atm access really close by just to go on their website and all of them have an atm locator which you can pretty much find out which acms are supported within your area by you know your zip code or your city or something like that so but they do have all atm access nationwide for all of these accounts and next up, very important, all of these accounts have a mobile app available on the Apple iOS and the Android Google Play Store. So those are the two main, you know, app stores right there for you have an Apple iPhone or if you got some Android, you know, Samsung or a Google Pixel phone or something like that. So the companies that provide these accounts, all of them have a mobile app that's available for free on the Apple and Android app stores. And which is very important, you know, so you can access your account on the go or at home or anywhere basically that you have cell phone service where you can access your account. And they have different features that you can do within the app, which is very very important as well like mobile check deposit and all of these accounts have mobile check deposit so basically mobile check deposit is really convenient really efficient what you do basically is you're taking a picture within the mobile app 
of that physical check that you've received. And then within a certain amount of days, that amount of money that you want to deposit in your account that you took that picture of of that check is deposited into your account. So you don't have to go to a physical location or an ATM or anything like that to deposit a check. You can do it right there from your phone, wherever you have access, just like that within the account. All of these accounts have mobile check deposit, which I've used personally, it's very convenient. Some of them do have limits where, you know, they cannot deposit that whole amount at a certain date and everything like that. Sometimes they spread it out. I know the company that I use, they spread, I had a check that I deposited and they had to spread out the deposit within a couple days right there. So it wasn't really inconvenient or anything like that. It's just something to be aware of that if you have a large check, you may not be able to deposit all of it at once right there, but it will be spread out, something like that. So all of these accounts have mobile check deposit. And then next up, all of these accounts have have direct deposit. So a lot of people get paid at their employer through direct deposit. And I'm sure some people still get paid by paper check and that's fine, but you can use mobile check deposit to deposit that in your account. And one of these accounts actually does have some physical locations. We'll get into that though. But all of these accounts right here for these institutions have direct deposit. So you can set it up with your employer to have a certain amount of money of your check or all of the money from your check percentages or whatnot to be deposited into these checking accounts. And then also all of these accounts have online bill pay. So you can set up to pay your bills through these accounts online is a service that's provided right there within the app or within the website you can set it up very seamless to pay your bills with the funds that are in your checking account. And now last on the list of what all of these have in common is that they all have online funds transfer, which means you can basically transfer funds to and from these accounts to other financial institutions. And now the amount of time that it takes ranges, you know, it could be a day or two or something like that. Usually it's pretty quick, pretty efficient, but all of these accounts have online funds transfer that is provided a free service for these companies. Now, the banking institution that you're transferring to or from, not sure about who that is. So I'm not sure if they're going to charge you anything like that, but online funds transfer with these accounts is a service that's provided as well. And that is it with everything that they all have in common for sure. Very important things. I'm sure there's other smaller things that, you know, some of these accounts have in common, but those are really important features that I think for me personally, all of those features right there that I've listed are things that I would have as a requirement for me when choosing an online checking account. Like they have to have all of these right here, at least at the bare minimum, at least for me to even entertain or think about or doing more research to see if this account is worth me opening basically. So all of these accounts right here do have all of those features in common, which is very great, very awesome. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the top five list, starting with number five. Number five on the list is Quantic Checking Account. Now I just say Quantic Checking Account because as a pro, and as you see right there, as a con, they have three different checking accounts. And I was kind of like, should I list this as a con or pro? I'm not just saying that because like, this is something that you have to think about. If you really like Quantic Bank or the other features that you'll see that they all share, you might think like, okay, now the dilemma is which checking account do I want to open? So like I said, some of these pros and cons aren't necessarily like major pros or major cons. Sometimes a slight dilemma or something like that. Because with Quantic checking account right here, you have three different checking accounts. And I'll go over them briefly right here. And the first one they have right there is the high interest checking account, which you can earn up to 1.10% APY annual percentage yield with this checking account. However, there is a requirement to earn that 1.10% on all balance tiers. So no matter what you have in your account, you can earn that 1.10% APY. But to get that 1.10% APY, you have to make at least 10 qualifying debit card point of sale transactions of $10 or more per statement cycle. They say failure to make qualifying transactions will result in a 0.01 interest in APY. And then there is a minimum opening deposit of $100 for this high interest checking account. And then the next account they have is the Bitcoin rewards checking account, where you can get 1.5% Bitcoin on all eligible debit card purchases. With this account, there is a minimum deposit of $500 to open up this account. So this is for the crypto connoisseurs out there that, you know, the Bitcoin enthusiasts, the Bitcoin bulls, you know, whatever name you want to call them, you know, so these are the people like that. If they just want this checking account just for that, there is a crypto basically checking account right there. Now you have still, with all of these checking accounts, they have all those other main features that you'll see, you know, like the ATM access and the no overdraft fees and other features you'll see on the pros, but they all have their certain cons on the other side right there. And so with the Bitcoin rewards checking account, you do have a separate account that's going to be for your Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin is not going to be in a Quantic Bank, basically. It's not going to be in your checking account. It's going to be a separate account that you'll have to open to have that Bitcoin right there. So for that reward for that Bitcoin account, the con I kind of say on that is that you're really not opening just one account when you open that Bitcoin reward checking account with Quantic. There's a separate account with a different company that you'll have for the Bitcoin for it to be held right there. Now that could be a pro for you. You might say, okay, good, I do want that separated. But then some other people might say, oh, another account, okay, here we go. So it's kind of like, like I said at the beginning, you know, pros and cons, eh, sometimes they're interchangeable, sometimes not, sometimes least important, more important than others. So that's what I thought of is probably more of a con for some people than a 
Gamer Pro with the Bitcoin Rewards checking account. And then the third checking account that Quantic has is the Cash Rewards checking account, where you can get 1% cash back on all eligible debit card purchases. And with this one, this is a $50 cap on the cashback reward right there per statement cycle. So it like that requirement for the transactions for the high interest, that's per statement cycle as well. So if you don't meet that certain criteria within the statement cycle, it's typically a month right there, not exactly a month. Sometimes it starts on a certain you know date of the month until that next date of the next month. So for the statement cycle, there is a cap on the cashback rewards for the cashback checking account. So that would be the con for that one. And so like, that's the dilemma right there. If you really want Quantic Bank, it's like, okay, now which account do you want to choose right there? And now also with all of these accounts, you have access to over 90,000 in-network ATMs. And in-network ATMs are ones that you don't have any fees associated with. So no matter where it's at, you know, with the ATM across the states, you know, if your billing address is in a certain state, California, you're in, you know, Texas or whatnot, it doesn't matter. If it's in-network, then that is gonna be able to be an ATM that you can use without any fees or anything. So there's over 90,000 in-network ATMs with Quantic right there, which is, that's pretty awesome right there. And those in-network ATMs that includes Allpoint, MoneyPass, SUM, SUM, and Citibank. And with the no overdraft fees right here, I'm gonna pull up the schedule of fees right here for Quantic Bank so you can see all the fees right there. As you'll see, not many fees right there. A fee for account research, which is pretty typical, something really strenuous going on with your account. You don't wanna get some deep diving research done right there. They're gonna charge for that. However, you see no charge for other instances in your account with cashier's checks, money orders, different things like that. And then you also have right there the overdraft charge right there, which is $0 on the overdraft charge and the non-sufficient funds fee. However, they say a fee applies to overdraft created by check, in-person, withdrawal, ATM withdrawal, or other electronic means right there. So that is what the overdraft charge protection that they have right there. And then you see the other fees right there. You got legal fees, stop payment, wire transfers, depending on what kind of wire transfer it is. It can either be zero plus correspondent or $25 or $35 for, so $35 for the wire transfer outgoing to foreign customers, and then wire transfer outgoing to domestic customers, $25 plus correspondent. And so those are the list of fees right there for Quantic Bank right there. The next pro, this is kind of neat right here. I've never seen this with any other account right here. So what Quantic Bank has is a contactless payment ring. So yeah, as you see it right there, you just kind of do a get, you know, you've seen the readers where you could use Apple Pay or kind of tap your card on or something like that. So Quantic has a pay ring where you, they say you'll always have access to your money with this payment wearable. Leave your debit card behind and embrace the future of payments. So let's look a little bit more into this right here, this payment ring. It looks pretty neat. It looks like a wedding band or something. Got a titanium black steel aluminum subject <laughs> but yeah so it had it right there say regular 29 dollars right there but it said it's included for free your debit card evolved exclusively for quantic checking account customers so contactless payment ring right there and it says secure technology no need to charge it leave your charging cables and battery packs in the drawer you won't need them for this unique wearable it utilizes the same chip technology as a plastic debit card so it's ready when you are, it says, and it built to last, made from, oh, here it is. So this is what it's built of. Made of high purity zirconia ceramic. Their wearable ring is water and scratch resistant and durable enough to survive normal day-to-day -day life. Easy to manage, just like a debit card. You can easily manage your pay ring through online banking or their mobile app. You can lock and unlock it like your debit card, and you can control it how you want the ring to be used right there. Customized transaction amount limits. So pretty neat feature. I saw that, and I was like, wow, okay, yeah, that's, that's neat. I haven't seen that before. So, I mean, it may be a pro to some people. Maybe just kind of like a meh or a gimmick to some people, but I figured it'd be kind of something cool. To, it's more of a pro. It's definitely not an economy. You don't have to use it. You, you're going to have a debit card with this account as well. So if it was the only way you could have a debit card, it's like through the ring and there was no physical card or anything like that then i'll probably say yeah it's probably a con but in this case it's a pro and the other pro with this account right here is that there is zell p2p which stands for person to person payments so you can send money to other people that have zell in their banking institution just like that pretty seamless i've used the feature before it's a neat way to send and receive money it works i haven't had an issue with it I haven't used it a lot but i have used zell a few times and so you can do that with this account it is a service that is provided and with the cons right here, I've pretty much gone over all the cons because they kind of separate them by accounts. You know, some of the cons apply to the Bitcoin account or the high yield interest account. And the only other con left right here is that there is no cash deposit available. So that is kind of a miss right there because some checking accounts offer that and some don't. Some offer it at certain ATMs. And I was kind of surprised because I was looking over around the place with this. And this is something that may get updated later that they may provide, you know, cash deposits. This isn't like necessarily saying they're never going to provide this because some of the ATMs that they 
they have, I'm sure, have the ability to deposit cash. It's just seeming that Quantic doesn't have that feature available for their checking accounts yet, or they haven't applied it, or they don't want to. I'm not sure what the issue is, but that it could be a con for some people who really want need to deposit cash often. It may be something to look into for the future with this account because they have a lot of ATM access. And I was kind of surprised when I was researching this and found that there is no cash deposits. Quantic Bank mobile app. As you see, not a lot of reviews, and you'll see that compared to the other banks because Quantic Bank is not that big of a bank. I didn't know much about Quantic Bank before making this video. I've seen the logo. I've seen a few things here and there, but I didn't know much about their bank. So I did a lot of research, you know, for this video right here. And so with their mobile app, they have about 470 ratings right here. As you see, a little over four stars. So 4.4 stars with their rating. And you see very rough around the edges. Somebody saying the whole Bitcoin rewards part is completely unclear. Worst banking experience. So, you know, you see some kind of rough, you know, right here, some rough reviews some one star reviews of what, you know, so like I state, something to definitely look into with these accounts. You want to see what other people are having with them. What kind of experience you want to see what other kind of experiences people are having with the banks, with the apps, you know, and this way you kind of see how the app looks. I mean, like looking at this app right here. Yeah, it looks kind of. I won't say bland. It looks kind of basic in a sense, you know, from what I've seen with other apps. So if that's important to you, you may want to look more into it. If it's not, you may want to look more into it or not look more into it. So and we'll just go to the other reviews. So most helpful. So a lot of people have voted up these one star reviews as being helpful. And then there's some five star reviews as well. Four star reviews. As you see, the majority or five stars. So think about look more into the app itself as far as like what's important to you and the reviews and everything. So that is the Quantic Bank mobile app right there. But that is it for number five, the Quantic checking accounts. I'll say not just one checking account, but checking accounts. They have three different ones right there. That's number five. Let's get to number four on the list. And next up, number four on the list is the Lending Club Rewards Checking Account. And some of the pros right here. First up, we'll start with the first pros that they have money pass in some SUM ATM network. So those are their in-network ATMs. Well, that is a vast network right there. That's tens of thousands of ATMs. And like I said, you can check their website to see which specific ATMs are available in your area. But money pass and some, those are two major ATM networks. So that's going to be nationwide ATM access for sure with those ATMs. And there is unlimited ATM fee rebate. So if you use an ATM that's not one of the in-network ATMs, Lending Club will provide fee rebates. So that makes the ATM network even more vast because you're not just limited to the in-network ATMs because with other accounts, yeah, you can use out-of-network ATMs, but however, there is typically fees associated with that. And some of these other accounts, they do rebates or cash back, you know, or, you know, avoid those fees and everything like that. So with Lending Club, they have fee rebates for out-of-network ATMs. So free access to ATMs, they say they don't charge a fee and they rebate ATM fees charged by other other banks worldwide and they state that you'll get unlimited ATM fee rebates and that could save you over $180 a year so there's just kind of like a study of saying average how much on average do people use out of network ATMs and they're saying you, they'll save you over 180 and that's not saying specifically like that's what you're going to get charged basically or anything like that that's just pretty much them saying like that's what we found to be an average and they're stating that out of network fees cost two dollars and fifty cent on average and they have their source of cnbc and they're stating if somebody were to use an out of network six times per month at an average of two dollars and fifty cents per withdrawal they would spend 180 dollars in atm fees in 12 months so that's how they kind of got that figure right there so they have unlimited atm rebate so that's definitely a pro next pro right there they have is the one percent cash back so they have a one percent cash back tied to their debit card once you're using it to spend you know money and everything like that they have a one percent cash back that is applied to it so that's neat and the next pro is early direct deposit which is really neat so let's say you get paid every other friday well with lending club checking account you'll probably see your deposit go right there into your account on wednesday or thursday typically it's up to two business days so it's going to be before that typical day that you would get paid though with early direct deposit so you will get paid a day or two earlier than you normally would once your direct deposit is linked to this account and it's going through and everything you'll be receiving your check deposited into your account a couple days earlier than you normally would and the, also the other pro is that there are no overdraft fees with the Lending Club Rewards checking account. And now another pro with this account is that I saw that they do have budgeting tools where you need some, you know, extra organization with your account to kind of prioritize, to put things kind of in pockets, in folders, everything. You can do that online with the Lending Club checking account. They do have budgeting tools. And then the other pro is that they state that the first order of checks is free. So they'll provide a book of checks to you for free with the first order. And the other pro I saw is that you can deposit cash at some ATMs. They didn't state this on their 
their account, I had to actually contact customer service through the live chat because I was curious, you know, if you could deposit cash. I couldn't find it online, you know, any articles, anything like that. And they stated that once you open an account, they'll provide a list of ATMs where you can deposit cash. So there's certain ATMs where you can deposit cash, not all of them, but certain ones. So that is a pro because, with, like I said, with some checking accounts, you can't deposit cash at all. Can be kind of a con because you, you know, you can't do it at any ATM network, but I consider it more of a pro than a con that you actually can. So that's what I have right here as the last pro right there with the Lending Club account. And like I state, with these pros and cons, there are other pros, you know, that I may not list. I'm not listing all the pros, you know, it's something that could be very minor, like a wire transfer or something like that could be a pro or con with you. And speaking of wire transfer, let's go over some of the fees right here with the Lending Club checking account. Like if you need an expedited debit card sent to you, you lost yours, you need one really quickly, there's going to be $35 charge right there you know, research on the account, $25 hourly and the wire transfers. So a domestic wire out transfer to a consumer, $20, a domestic wire out to a business, $18, international wire out is going to be $40 right here. And that monthly maintenance fee, that's for their tailored checking accounts with balances less than $500 only right there. And so there's a uh, other fees right there, a little associated. So it kind of depends on what you use because some people, you know, they don't use a, you know, account research or summons or stop payment or different things like that. that you'll see fees. Of. So that's why you will a lot of times see these accounts online stating, you know, no monthly maintenance fees, no fees in general and everything, because typically a lot of the minor fees that are on these accounts to find print that you'll find on other pages don't apply to most people because they're not going to be using those features right there. So, but there is those other fees if you want to look into that more it's on their website right there and so with the cons of this account it's kind of in the fine print right here and to obtain like the cash back and the interest there is certain requirements that have to be met right there and so like and also have as the interest as a con you know the interest that can be a actually available to you is at 0.10% to 0.15% depending on your balance. So with that as a con, because that's a really low amount of interest. I mean, it is something which is better than nothing. However, I use personally checking accounts for transactions. I don't use checking accounts to have a lump sum of money in. I barely keep any money in my checking account because lump sums of money for me are either in savings accounts, CD, certificate of deposit accounts, or invested in the stock market. So I'm not going to be sitting a bunch of money parked in a checking account. So that's why like interest to me on a checking account isn't that important it may be important for some people but since the interest was under one percent i put it as a con because that's just a really paltry low amount of interest however to even obtain that interest it is requirements so and for the interest so with the interest there are tiers right here which i'll say in a tiered account so this is the con right here for balances between zero to two thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents there's 0% APY, so you don't get any interest on those accounts. Now, for accounts that have balances between $2,500, to $99,999.99, there is a 0.10% APY that will be applied. So if you got an account balance of at least $2,500, but underneath the $100,000, you get 0.10% APY. And so the 0.15% APY applies to balances of $100,000 or greater. So it has a tiered structure with that APY, which is a low amount of APY and even. But so that can be a con right there because, you know, depending on what your balance is will depend on what APY you get with this account. And then the other con is the requirements for the cash back. Reward checking accounts that meet the following requirements for the calendar month and review. So you have to have one of these two requirements to get the cash back for eligible purchases. Now, the first one is either you maintain an average monthly balance of at least $2,500 or the second one is that you receive at least $2,500 and qualifying direct deposits. So either you have that monthly balance that is at least an average of $2,500 or you receive a direct deposit totaling $2,500 within that calendar month. So you have to have either one of those going on with your account to be eligible for the cash back. And then the other con I saw with this account is that for wire transfers, you have to contact customer service. So that can be kind of a con for somebody to not be able to do it on their own, to not be able to initiate it. You have to contact customer service. I saw that on the account. I didn't see that really on any other accounts, but it kind of stood out on this account with this company right here. And then the other con is not much, $25, but there is a $25 minimum to open the account right here. So you have to have at least $25 for initial deposit to open this account. So like I say, $25, not much. So, but con, because you have to have, you have to put some money in right up front to open the account. So like I say, not a major con, but that's, that's it right there. And we went over the interest right there with the Lending Club account. So those are the pros and cons for the Lending Club rewards checking account. Now we have the Lending Club. As you see more reviews on this, we got 2.3 thousand reviews. And the ratings right there average 4.4 stars. And let's look at how the app looks. This app looks nice right here. Nice design. Got the same, you know, kind of theme going on with their logo and everything. And there's their budgeting tools right there. So you got to kind of split things up and see where you're spending your money, you know, dining, your car, house, 
entertainment, different things like that. So that's neat to see how that looks. So let's see what else they got going on here in the reviews. Reviews the best, five star right there. You know, great APY, meh app, three stars. Great service and benefits, five stars. Learn term banking, five stars. All lies. Well, so you know, sometimes with these reviews, boy, that you sometimes you really have to look in more into them to see, you know, what they're saying. You know, sometimes the the headline might not be that good, or sometimes you have like a really bland like star rating. Like, what else? Why did you rate it one star? Why, why did you rate it three star, five star? So. You can definitely look at you see what's most helpful. Let's see how these look. What have been mostly up, you know, voted up. I guess you could say these will be the most helpful ones. So you got a vast range. I see some nice five star reviews and then some horrible one and two star reviews. So definitely something to look into right here. Let's go to most recent and disappointed right there. Three stars with that. Three months so far. Five star, and this is for the app itself, not specifically for the checking account. Some people may be using different accounts for their service with Lending Club, so they may be talking specifically about that service and not the app itself. So something to look more into. That's about how the Lending Club app looks and some of the reviews of it right there on the Apple App Store. That's number four. So now let's get to number three on the list. And number three on the list is the SoFi checking account. This is the checking account that I use personally, one of the checking accounts I use. I use two different checking accounts. So I use the online checking account with through SoFi, and then I use a checking account with a major bank that is has branches locally because I do that so I have ATM access, notary access, different things like that from a major bank you know, locally that I use that that's also across the nation. So from somewhere and I need to use those services is, you know, available to me for free. And then I have an online checking account that I use for a lot of transactions as well. And so that's how I use my checking accounts. But like I stated earlier, I don't have a lot of money in my checking accounts on purpose because I don't like a lot of money just sitting in a checking account, just the amount that I need for that month for transactions, for paying things like that. So I keep it really close to typically what I need per month to pay on things. So that's how I use my checking accounts. I know different people use them differently and that's fine. So that's why I stated some of the pros may be more pros to you and some of the cons may be more cons to you and vice versa. So let's get into the pros and cons with SoFi. The pro of SoFi is that it comes with a savings account. But a con with this is that it comes with a saving account. So when you open a checking account with SoFi, you're also getting a savings account and vice versa. If you're opening a savings account with SoFi, you're also getting a checking account. This could be annoying to some people because, you know, they come in saying, I just want a checking account you know, and then, but then they have the savings account linked to it. However, you don't have to use the savings account. So yes, it's a requirement that you have to have both accounts when you open one, basically you're opening both accounts. However, you don't have to use the other one, you know? So if you're opening a SoFi checking account just to use the checking, you don't have to use the savings. Me personally, I use the savings for multiple reasons. Uh, I really like the SoFi app. So that's that's one of the main reasons why I do like SoFi. I really like the app. I like how I could do various different things within the app. You know, I use a checking account, I use a savings account. I use it for some investing. So it's a really broad, very well-built app that I've really liked. Now, I use the savings account because it has a 4% APY currently on it. And, and it hasn't been, that. it just actually raised recently. I made a video on that. But typically they've been having a nice high APY associated with their savings accounts if you have direct deposit linked to it. That's the requirement right there. And I do have direct deposit. Part of my check for my normal job goes to SoFi. But I like the interchangeability of the SoFi savings account and checking account. I can move money back and forth instantly. So when I move money from the checking account to the savings or from the savings to the checking account, it happens right there on the spot. After I pretty much click complete, few seconds, minute later or whatnot, the money shows up in the other account. So I really like the interchangeability, how I can move funds around quickly between the checking account and the savings account with SoFi. So I'll, yeah, I'll keep a lump sum, a nice emergency fund in that savings account. However, if I need it in the checking account, I can just transfer it over right there and not have to wait a day or two or anything like that. So I like that feature with SoFi. So for me, it is a pro having a savings account that's really well built, that's really nice and has a lot of good features in it with SoFi. So that's why I say it's more of a pro for me, maybe a con for other people. And so the other pro with the SoFi checking account is that there is a 1.20% APY annual percentage yield. So for a checking account, that's a nice amount. That's a nice yield right there because the average checking account interest rate nationwide is like 0.06% or something like that. So very paltry. So that's substantially higher than that right there, that national average, which is typically around 0.10%, under 0.10%. Definitely under 1%. So yeah, 1.20% APY with the checking account with SoFi. And you don't have to have direct deposit to have that 1.20% APY. So with direct deposit or without for the checking account, 
there's a 1.20% APY. And that's currently. APY is definitely a something that's subject to change. It's variable. So it's not a fixed rate. Next month, the APY could be different. It could be higher. It could be lower because that's what's been going on with the savings accounts. Lately, they've been raising because the federal funds rate has been raising. So like I said, so if I recently raised their APY on their savings from like 3.75 to 4 and before that, it was like 3.5. So they've been steadily doing several other online banks have been doing it as well with their savings accounts. It's been really great. And I actually make videos monthly on the top 10 savings accounts ranked by APY. So definitely check Check that out if you're interested in that on my YouTube channel, Finance with Abram. Now, also a pro with the SoFi checking account is that there is early direct deposit. So you will get paid earlier with your funds from your job, your employment, however you get your direct deposit than you typically would. So for me personally, with the employment that I have linked to direct deposit with SoFi, I normally would get paid on Friday. But with the SoFi checking account early deposit feature, I get paid on Wednesdays. And it happens, you know, pretty early on Wednesdays, usually around 11 or 12 o'clock. You know, I get the notification. You got paid early, you know, check the app and there it is, the funds right there. So they do have early direct deposit with SoFi, which is neat. And then also another pro is that there is over 55,000 all point ATMs. And that is the in network ATMs that SoFi uses, the all point, which is a vast array of network of ATMs. So there's over 55,000 of those nationwide. And then also there is a feature in SoFi has, there's a 15% cash back at select local retailers. Now this is something depending on where you live, you may have some local retailers that you know, are a part of this and you may have some that aren't. And I've had checked this right here and there's sometimes I'm in areas where there's no retailers that are participating in this 15% cash back. So this isn't something that's definitely that you'll like, you know, that's for sure that, hey, no matter where you live, you're going to have retailers that are going to be participating in this 15% cash back. So you could definitely be living in an area where you have no access to this, or you may be living in an area where you do. So that is something that to just be aware of is not something that I think somebody should be like, oh, I'm going to get this checking account because I can get 15% cash back at local retailers. First off, you don't know which local retailers have this. And second off, it's not a vast amount. Like I said, I've been in certain cities where I've checked this and there's like nobody. So, but a pro more than a con because it is neat when it is available. Next pro on the list right here is that they do have overdraft coverage up to $50 However, it's with direct deposit. So as you see right there, that's also a con is that the overdraft coverage is provided. However, it's only provided if you have direct deposit set up. So that's the thing with SoFi is that they have certain things linked to direct deposit. As you'll see right there, another con. I'm kind of going back and forth because I'm talking about it at the same time. The 15% cash back also requires direct deposit. So there's a stipulation like, yeah, that's neat. 15% cash back is neat. Overdraft coverage is neat. However, the con associated with it is that it requires you to have direct deposit. So that is what's going on right there with those pros and cons kind of, you know, linked together right there, a pro, but then there's a con associated with it. All right, let's go into a little bit more detail with this overdraft coverage with SoFi because for the overdraft coverage, there is a stipulation of direct deposit. However, there's also a stipulation of how much for the direct deposit. So you have to receive at least $1,000 in total monthly direct deposit to be eligible for that no fee overdraft coverage. And the overdraft coverage is basically like if you spend the more than what you have in your account, the overdraft coverage covers up to $50 with no fees. For amounts over $50, the transaction will just be declined. And you'll be eligible for overdraft coverage once you receive a thousand dollars or more in qualifying direct deposits over the preceding 30 days right there so it has to be set up for a little while with direct deposit and for you to achieve that amount within that preceding 30 days to be eligible for that overdraft coverage and they'll let you know when you're eligible for that coverage so it isn't automatic once you start direct deposit or anything like that you have to have those requirements in place before you have that overdraft coverage so as you'll see right here as i'm pulling up on their website they're really big into no fees zero 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 and everything like that so you'll see it across the site right here and was really neat, you know, first replacement car, additional replacement car, replacement car, rush delivery, all zero, no fees right there. No fees for stop payment, no fees for statement and research, legal processing, none of that. No inactive account fees, no dormant account fees, none of that. And, you know, some of these have kind of stipulations, they, like you see, you know, no overdraft fees where there is certain stipulations with that. So a lot of bold claims up front, but some of these have a little underlying, you know, issue going on with them as well. But, you know, no fees for the P2P transfers, person to person. I've used that before within the app. Very neat right there. No fees with that. Bill pay, of course, typical things like that. Bill pay, mobile deposit capture, zero with that. That's with these other accounts as well. But some of these accounts don't list this on their fee schedule because it's just pretty much known, like noted, like, you know, that's free. However, you know, some companies like to kind of just put all the free things right there just so you can see a lot of zeros, a lot of no fees. And I get it, it's marketing. So like, even though SoFi has this long list of zero fees, other accounts have this as well, but they just don't list them on their schedule of fees. In-network ATMs at all point ATMs, 
there's no fee associated with that. However, if you use an out-of-network ATM with the SoFi debit card, you could be charged a fee through that out-of-network ATM. So that is a fee right there. But with the in-network ATMs that SoFi uses, the all point company, no fees associated with that, domestic or international. And then also another pro, a new feature that SoFi is rolling out is that you can pay in four interest-free payments. So they have a certain feature, you know, for certain, you know, purchases you make, you can break that up within four interest-free payments, which can be neat for some people that need that, you know, kind of broken up and anything like that. So that is a new feature they've been rolling out. For me, I haven't used it, but I say, you know, it's a neat feature. It's a pro more than a con. You don't have to use it, but if you need to or want to use it, it's there. Another pro with the SoFi checking account is that they do provide free checks. I actually have a checkbook. I've only used a couple from there since I've had this account for years. So <laughs> it tells you how often I use checks. I know people don't use checks often. So, but you know, it's a free feature. It's free. It's a pro. So yeah, they do provide free checks and I've used them. They work. So yeah. All right. And now on to the cons. I've talked about the cons right here is that, you know, there's, it comes with the savings account. Can be a pro for some, can be a con for others. And the cons associated with the direct deposit have to be, you know, a requirement for those other features. Now, the other con that I've noticed with this account is that with the cash deposit, cash deposit isn't a vast thing that's available with this account. There's limited locations that you can have deposit cash with this account, but there's a cash deposit fee associated with it. So let me get in more detail of that for you. Now, this is something, like I said, I'm thinking, I'm hoping SoFi like works around this to get this updated to, you know, provide this service either for cheaper, for free, or in more locations or something, because depositing cash is something that, you know, people do with checking accounts. You know, I do. Sometimes you get cash, you know, maybe you're doing like a group lunch or something, a gathering, everybody's chipping in for door dash or some service or something you have some people that'll you know they'll venmo you they'll zell you they'll paypal you or whatnot but then you have some people that they have cash they pay you cash you know but i'm not gonna say no to cash you know some people might you know oh i'll pay for something you pay for something for me later or something you know i do stuff like that sometimes like oh keep the cash you know you'll you'll get me next time or something but sometimes you need to take the cash and sometimes you want to deposit the cash. So yeah. And so with SoFi, you can make cash deposits through Green Dot as participating retailers. So that's the service provider. It's called Green Dot. And on their website, you can see the list of participating retailers that you can do this at. You can find it by, you know, your zip code or enter your address to see where around me can I deposit cash right there. For me, I believe there's like Walgreens. I think there was like a family dollar or a family dollar tree or something like that. So different places that have that Green Dot where I could deposit cash and everything. And also, there is a fee imposed upon when you deposit cash, and it is a fee of up to $4.95 to use that Green Dot platform right there. So that'll be an additional amount owed for each of your cash deposits. And they state that you will pay this fee at the point of sale. So when you deposit the cash, that's when you will pay the fee. So with the cash that you deposit, they say it can be available in your account and shown in your account as soon as 15 minutes, but it can take up to two hours. And there is cash deposit limits with this right here. So there's a total of two cash deposits allowed per day. And then a $500 cash deposit per transaction. So $1,000 per day, $3,000 per week, and $5,000 per month. So those are the limitations. So with the cash deposit with SoFi, it's kind of a pro, I guess you could say, that you can actually deposit cash. However, it's kind of a con because there's, you know, limited locations and a deposit fee. So, you know, there's kind of some stipulations. You just can't deposit cash. You, know, you got to find out where you can deposit the cash. And then you got to pay the fee. So... Kind of a little bit of a hassle right there, but you know, check it out online if you want to know more details about where specifically you can deposit cash if that's a feature that's very important to you. If not, like for me personally, like I stated, that's how I do. If I get cash I need to deposit, I use my local bank that I bank with, and then if I want to, I can transfer that money to SoFi or keep it there at the local bank or however like that. So that's how I work around that with deposit. All right, and now we have the SoFi app right here. It has 228,000 ratings right there with an average star rating of 4.8. So a lot of reviews right there and very well received, very liked the app right there with a 4.8 star rating right there, almost five stars. Let's see how the app looks. Of course, I know how the app looks with this one because I use it. And so nice design on this app right here. As you see, they have some of the features right there. They're not really showing much of the app, just kind of have promo images, it looks like. And there's the investing platforms, kind of how parts of it looks like. So, and yeah, there is part of the app right there design. So they have a lot of promotional images in their app store list. They don't really show much of the app, which is unfortunate because the app is well designed. I like the way it looks. It's sometimes, some people say it's kind of crowded, it has a lot going on, but I guess once you start using it, or maybe it's just, I'm able to kind of differentiate things that it doesn't seem that crowded to me. But there's more information on the app right there and some of the information on the services. Let's get to some of the reviews. Let's see a five star or some suggestions. Easy navigation, five star. Worst customer service, but still five star. I guess they 
Let's see, one star is supposed for the terrific interface, which is simple, fun, and beautiful. Okay, they must have updated their review. So they've had some responses. So you see developer response. You can respond to reviews on the App Store. It seems like SoFi has been doing that. So that's neat. And yeah, a lot of five star, four star. Let's go to see all. And those are the most helpful. Let's go to the most recent. And three star to have an issue with adding the card to the Apple Wallet. I have my SoFi added to my Apple Wallet and it works fine. So, you know, different people have different issues personally. So you never know. Something that affects you may not affect you, may not affect somebody else. Glitches here and there. Experiences are different for different people. One star, five star. A lot of five stars here. One star, five star, one star. So various reviews right there and you see mostly five stars for sure but you do have those other ones four star three star a few twos and some ones so yeah that is the sofi app on the apple app store and so yeah that is number three the sofi checking account let's go on to number two and number two on the list is the Ally checking account. Let's start off with the pros right here. With the pros, there are over 43,000 all point ATMs in network with Ally. So that's a vast amount of ATMs right there available nationwide. And like I stated before, you can definitely check out the website, you know, all point and Ally through them of which ATMs are available in your area because certain areas, of course, are going to have more ATMs than others. So even though 43,000 is a big number, it may be a lot in your area or not that many of your area. So if ATM access is very important to you definitely check it out for each of these companies for these accounts next pro is that they have up to ten dollars atm reimbursement so if you do use an atm that is out of network ally will provide that reimbursement of up to ten dollars per monthly statement cycle right there and so with the out of network atm fees they're typically around two dollars two dollars and fifty cents three dollars so if you use those a couple times right there in the month ally is going to reimburse up to ten dollars of that so you can use them a couple times and not have to worry about the fee because ally will reimburse that amount up to ten dollars right there for those out of network atms also another pro with the checking account with ally they have early direct deposit so Several of these other accounts, not all of these accounts have it. That's why I couldn't put it as a feature they all have in common. But certain of these accounts right here have the early direct deposit, which is really neat. You'll typically get paid up to two business days before you would standard get paid with your accounts, you know, through your employer and everything like that. If you normally get paid on a Wednesday, then you'll probably get paid on a Monday instead with direct early direct deposit. If you get paid normally on the Friday, you will probably get paid on the Wednesday with early direct deposit. So typically two business days earlier than what you normally get paid is what you will get with the early direct deposit. Some Sometimes one business day, but I've seen and I've heard me personally with early direct deposit, I typically get paid two business days earlier than I normally would. So that is a nice feature right there. Nice pro to have. Next pro with Ally, really important for some people, is that they have 24-7 customer service. Now, you don't see this often with companies in general and financial institutions or you know, any company in general, basically, is that Ally has 24-7 customer service available. So 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, you can reach them online, you know, through their chat, through so it's 24 to so 24. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Ally has it where you can reach customer service. So really neat feature right there. Next pro right there they have is that they have overdraft protection with the Ally checking account. Let's go into more detail of what this involves. And so they have two different types of overdraft protection. The first one is that you can link your Ally bank savings or money market account to your interest checking account and they'll move money over in one transfer rounded up to the nearest $100 should you accidentally overdraft. And then the other service they provide is CoverDraft, which is your fee-free safety net. They state if you accidentally overspend, CoverDraft provides up to $250 in temporary relief for common transactions. And they say in most cases, you qualify for CoverDraft 30 days after depositing $100 or more into your checking account. And they stated that basic coverage starts at $100, but if you set up and receive a qualifying direct deposit of at least $250 for two months in a row, you can, up your cover draft coverage to $250 and you'll need at least one direct deposit every 45 days to maintain that expanded coverage. They state, should you overspend, your next deposit automatically applies to the negative balance. They state that you could turn off overdraft or adjust your coverage amount whatever you like as long as you don't have a negative balance. And they'll state that they'll give you 14 days to bring your balance out of the negative and may restrict withdrawals from your account if it's not back in black after that. So if your account isn't back in the positives, isn't above that negative amount within that amount of time right there, then they will restrict 
your withdrawals if it's not right there. So they're going to give you 14 days to bring your balance out of that negative amount. And as a friendly reminder, they state that cover draft is a service, not a line of credit or a guarantee. If your purchase isn't covered for any reason, let's say that the transaction exceeds your cover draft limit, for example, it would be declined, but we'll never charge you an overdraft fee. So how they get out of that is that they'll try to cover some of it if they can. If they can't, then they'll just deny the transaction where you wouldn't even have the transaction go through to get charged an overdraft fee or anything. So that's how they provide that overdraft protection right there. There's two different ways and you can go through setting it up. Like if you don't have a savings account or a money market account with Ally, that's fine. They now have the other overdraft protection for you, which can either cover something or just automatically decline something to not let you go into the negative. So that's the overdraft protection with Ally. The next pro right here with Ally is that they have Zelle P2P payment, so that person-to-person -person payment. So Zelle, which is a very big service, very big transactional service, a lot of people use it. So seeing that a company has that is neat because that's a way for you to send money and receive money to other people that have that platform available to them. And then another pro with Ally checking account is that they have free checks available right there. So that is a pro. Like for me personally, like I stated, I don't use checks often. I've used a couple, like two or three within the past, like two or three years. So yeah, but it's available there. It's nice to have a checkbook just in case for those times where you need to write a physical check. So you do have free checks available to you through Ally with this account. Now with the cons of the checking account with Ally, there are no cash deposits. So there's no way to deposit cash with the Ally checking account. So that's unfortunate. So that's the issue that you may want to look into. But like I stated, how I do with my cash deposits, I use a different bank for that. So that could be a con. It could be a big con to you or it could be something that you can work around. But that is a con right there with that account. And the other con is that with the interest on the Ally checking account, it ranges from 0 0.10 to 0.25% APY. So, you know, yes, yeah, a little bit above that national average but it's not that much above it so like I stated not a big con because it, you know there is an interest but the con is it is a small amount of interest so I mean that could be something that's on the pro because hey that's better than no interest but it could be on the cons because it's not that much interest so it may or may not be a pro or con to you or it may just be you know negligent nothing to you basically so yeah 0 0.10 percent to 0 0.25 percent APY right now they have two tiers for their interest for their APY if you have underneath $15,000 in your account, then your APY is going to be 0.10%. However, if you have $15,000 or more in your account, then your APY is going to be 0.25%. Now that is a variable amount, so it is subject to change at any time, and they can change the tiers as well. But as of right now, as of me recording this video in 2023, that's how it's broken down right there. So like I say, not that big of a in cons. As you see, like as we get higher on this list, there's less cons and the cons aren't as, you know, pronounced, aren't as important, you know, kind of. So that's how you can see this, you know, how I'm forming this list. It's kind of hard to rank some of these somewhat, but not overall. And like I state, these are how I rank it personally. And you see the account I use. The account I use is number three on the list. So this is just saying, you know, what's more important to me may not be more as important to you and vice versa. You know how the app looks, how it feels. That's very important as well. Ally has a nice app. I actually use Ally as well. I've used them for their savings account and it, I like their app as well. It's very seamless, works very nice, good design. And they're a company that likes to raise their interest rates pretty often as well with their savings accounts. And they have nice CD certificated deposit accounts as well. I'm going to be actually looking into that more and using one of those probably here soon. And so like, yeah, I like Ally. I am a customer of Ally. Great company. So far, I haven't had any real issues with them. And, you know, if I were to use another checking account, I would look into Ally. But right now I'm happy with what I'm using. But, you know, I am happy using other services provided by Ally. You know, as far as like, yeah, you may not like them as a checking account, but some of these companies, you may want to look at them for their savings accounts or their certificate of deposit accounts or their investing platform. So Ally has that as well. They have robo investing. They have automatic investing platform as well. So, you know, we can look into it for different things. You know, you may want to have an account. You may want to deal with a company where you have several accounts with them. You may want to have a checking account and a CD with them and, you know, invest with them or something like that. So that sometimes that's how people choose accounts. And me personally, that's how I choose accounts. It's like not only do I want a good account with a lot of the features or something, but I want some convenience. I want to be able to have some other accounts with this company. It's, you know, work seamless more together. You know, I could transfer money here and that like that. So that's one reason why I use certain accounts with certain companies. And let's get to the fees right here with Ally Bank. Because they don't, they don't charge many fees at all either. So as you'll see right here on their site, you know, of course, monthly maintenance you know low daily balance fees none of thing nothing like that standard or expedited ACH transfers none of that incoming wires domestic and international they don't charge for that official cashier's checks they don't charge for that so that's really neat as you see some of the you know things that other companies charge for ally does not charge for right there and they're not going to hide the fees that they do charge for they state as they expedited delivery 15 dollars 
outgoing domestic wire is $20. And then there's the account research fee, $25 per hour. So there are some fees, not many right there for sure. And the fees they do have, a lot of people won't experience those because they don't do those. They don't use those. So that is neat right there. All right, now we have the Ally app on the Apple App Store. We have 54,000 ratings right there with an average star review of 4.7 on the stars right there. And let's see how the app looks. All right, I know personally, of course, how this app looks. It's a nice design on this as well. Very basic, kind of minimal, not super basic where it's not a lot of features or anything, but just like not really cluttered or anything I've seen with this app. More to the point. And this is pretty much how, yep, how it looks right here. You have the boosters. You have the different budgeting tools. They have some of that. They have buckets and to savings tools with their savings account. And, yeah, this is how the app looks pretty much right here. So, yeah, nice looking app. There's the other where you explore more services they provide right there. And that online APY is definitely not 0.7 anymore. So that's an older screenshot. I think it's like 3.75 currently. But, you know, <laughs> that's fine. So, yeah, and... More information about the app right there. A lot of different features right there with the app that you can do within the app. So it's neat to see what you can do within the app because sometimes you, know, you can only do stuff on desktop or whatnot. But with these online checking accounts, pretty much what you can do on a desktop is what you're going to be able to do mostly on the app as well because they want that convenience. And there's a lot of convenience with this app right here. And let's look at the reviews. Three star could be better. Two star used to be great. Another two star great service. Bad app. I got some bad app reviews right here. Let's see. One star, one star. Wow. So that's yeah, that's interesting. I didn't expect that. With you know, like I said, I've used Ally and haven't had really much issues. They're not my main service of financial services. Maybe things have changed or gotten worse or something. I'm not sure. But you see, mostly five stars right here. You do have those three star, two star, one star reviews. These are most recent ones. Not keeping pace with competition. Two star, easy and intuitive. Five star, one star right there. Four star, one star, five stars. So yeah, different variety of stars right here. You have some people commenting on the services. Some people on the app itself. So. Definitely something to look into, you know, right there, a face ID issue could be this, the phone, could be the service. Could, who knows? I haven't had face ID issues. So, you know, it just kind of depends on what people are going through. Some people, a lot of people don't leave reviews. I've noted, you know, I've getting, I personally got a lot of downloads on some of my apps and some apps don't have that many downloads, but overall I don't get many reviews. I typically say that's a good thing because typically when people have something negative happen to them in the app, they're more quick to leave a review than something positive. Although a lot of people leave positive reviews, obviously, as, as you can see, but so some people just don't leave reviews at all. Some people do, depending on what happens to them. But Ally account, yeah, has a lot of five-star reviews right there. So that's good. 4.7 overall out of five. So that is the Ally mobile app on the Apple App Store. All right. And that is number two on the list, the Ally interest checking account. And now for number one on the list, the Capital One 360 checking account. This one has a lot of great features on it. As you see right here, nice list of pros. Not many cons. We'll get into them right here. For the pros, first off here, there are over 70,000 in-network ATMs. And their in-network ATMs are the Capital One ATMs. They have their own ATMs by Capital One. And then there's AllPoint and MoneyPass, two big services as well for ATMs for sure. So over 70,000 in-network ATMs, so nationwide. And you can locate them online and see how many are in your area. And I've done this before in different areas in a lot of ATMs come up and I've used this feature before in different areas I've been in and I've had no issue finding ATMs because I'm just curious sometimes like how many ATMs does this company have in this city that I'm in and I'm living in or that I'm visiting and Capital One has a large network of in-network ATMs so definitely for sure that is definitely a pro next pro right here is that you can deposit cash at CVS stores so yes you can go to a CVS store and deposit cash right there with Capital One linked to your 360 checking account and right here, how to deposit cash is pretty easy, pretty seamless right there. They state that you can add cash to your 360 checking account up to $999 a day and five transactions a month. So there is a limitation on it, but you can do that up to $999 a day with only five transactions a month. And what you'll do is you'll use the Capital One mobile app and ask the CVS cashier to add cash in the store. So you'll sign into your account on the mobile app, get the barcode on the mobile app ready. They'll scan it hand over the cash to the cashier at CVS and they state your barcode is only available for 30 minutes. So if you're in a long line, maybe you want to wait till you pull that up maybe. So yeah, you do that right there. And then you have instant confirmation. Once your barcode is scanned, you'll get an instant in-app confirmation and you can use your money in minutes right there. They're stating pretty quick process right there to deposit cash, you know, so not super convenient. You can't, you know, it's not saying you can go to any of these ATMs. So what would be more convenient of course, is that if you could deposit cash at any of these ATMs, 
However, they're stating that you can deposit cash at the CVS stores. And sometimes I feel like I've seen ATMs that state that deposits are available within ATMs. So that's something to look into as well, because I know not all the ATMs have deposit available for, you know, depositing cash. They don't have that feature available, but some ATMs do have that ability to deposit cash. So something to definitely look more into if you're interested in that. And then the other pro with the Capital One 360 checking account is that they have early direct deposit available, which means you could get paid up to two days earlier than you normally would right there. So early direct deposit is very neat up to two business days earlier than you would normally get paid and boom, money is in your account if you have direct deposit set up. Next pro with Capital One is that there are no overdraft fees. So with their overdraft fees, they go about it in a couple of ways right here. So first off, they have auto decline. They state that they generally decline transactions that cause overdrafts on your account. And so also they have free transfer. If you have a savings account or a money market account with Capital One, they'll automatically transfer funds from that account to the checking account to cover the purchase to prevent an overdraft fee. And then they also have a no fee overdraft, which is a no fee on approved transactions that put your balance below zero dollars. And they say you can choose your overdraft option within your account. So how you want the overdraft to be handled just log into your account to choose how you want it to be handled right there and then another pro with the capital one account is that they do have some physical locations so they have capital one locations in general and then they have the capital one cafes which are like smaller setups that they have you know spread out right there and so that's something if that's important to you definitely want to check the availability of those because they're not really vast they're definitely not as vast as the in-network atms or anything like that there's not a ton of these locations but the fact that they actually do have some physical locations that's definitely a pro because some people want to walk in somewhere you know want to talk to somebody have a more physical presence with their banking so that is a sense where you know you got capital one you got a lot of online features that online checking accounts have for sure definitely with capital one but then you also have a little bit of a physical presence as well so that is a pro they do have some physical locations definitely check their website to see where they're at around you or wherever you're traveling or anything like that and then another pro with the capital one they do have the zelle person to person payments so you can send and receive money through zelle as you see you know several of these companies have zelle so that's one way to send and receive money without any fees or anything like that usually so zelle person to person payment that is neat and then another pro is that your first order of checks are free with Capital One. So like I stated before, you know, I laugh about it still because I just find it so funny how I barely use checks. But first order, that's all I need is one order of checks, basically, I feel like, I, you know, so first order of checks are free with Capital One. So it's nice to have, you know, just a checkbook of your checks associated with your account just in case you need that. And then on to the cons. There's really only one con that I could get this. I mean, like I say, there may be something else that may be more of a con or some little minor something that could be a con to you that's not a con to me or somebody else or vice versa. But the only thing I really notated that was notable to put on this right here is that this, the APY is 0.10% which, you know, is better than 0%, and it's around the national average, but it's still 0.10%. I mean, that's barely anything. So a con, but not that big of a con. Like I've stated before, I don't put a lot of money in checking accounts. I don't think it's a good thing to have a lot of money in checking accounts. This isn't financial advice or anything. This is just financial entertainment, financial education, financial awareness. But, you know, me personally, I don't have a lot of money in checking accounts, so I don't care what the interest rate is. Like I say, I use SoFi for some of my checking is 1.20%. That's great, but I still don't use it for the APY. I'd rather have money elsewhere in the market, you know, getting dividends in the market or appreciation on stock price or savings accounts online, high yield savings accounts that have higher APY or certificate of deposit accounts, you know, money market accounts. Go elsewhere for APY is what I would do. I go elsewhere for APY. I don't choose a checking account based on APY. But however, it's only 0.10%. So that would be a con, I would say. So let's get into some of the fees. And now with the fees associated with the Capital One account, there's not many fees associated with this account. This is definitely a low fee, no fee type of account. As you'll see right here, if you want to look at more detail in this, this is available online. As you see, key account terms and charges, zero, no fee for minimum deposit, open account, pay interest, that's free, Zelle, that's going to be free. You know, using Capital One ATMs or other in-network ATMs, that's free. And they don't charge you for using none Capital One branded ATMs. However, you may be subject to other fees from the ATM owner. So if you use an out of network ATM, you could be subject to those fees. But with over 70,000 in network ATMs, I mean, there shouldn't be an issue with finding an ATM unless you're just in a certain area where there are no in network ATMs and you definitely need to use ATM. Then, you know, there it is. You know, auto decline overdraft options right there, no fees associated with those. They have those in place to prevent the fees. And as you see right there, stop payment, no fee, statement copies, no fee, wire transfers for domestic incoming, they're free. 
And then for domestic outgoing, it's up to $30 per transfer. And there's an order of checks, you know, right there. There's the order of checks. If you need more checks, there's going to be a fee for that. However, the first checkbook, 50 right there in that is going to be free. Cashier's checks is going to be $20 online with overnight shipping or $10 in a Capital One location. And account research is actually free right there. What you see, that's actually a, something that costs with other companies, but it's free with Capital One. So there's a fees right there. You can look more into that if you want to with the fees for Capital One. And next up here, we have the Capital One mobile app on the Apple App Store. You have 6.9 million ratings right there with an average star review of 4.9 out of 5. So this one has the most ratings and most reviews. That's not how I ranked it as far as like the online savings account. This is the number one on my list right here, but that's it's not because of these ratings and reviews, but it is kind of interesting that they have so many ratings and such a good review as well with those star reviews, 4.9 out of 5. That is great. Let's look and see how the app looks right here. And I have used Capital One checking account before and it's a very nice app to use. And I've used the Capital One app for other services as well. And I haven't had an issue with it personally. So yeah, this is kind of how it looks. Got the face ID, got the credit score that you can keep track of, you know, locking your cards, all that. So yeah, Capital One has various different services. Of course, they have the credit cards and the checking accounts and the savings accounts and the teen checking accounts and savings accounts for kids and different things like that. So a lot of different accounts you can work with right there. So that you see it right there, like that person right there on that app has a checking account and a credit card with them. And let's look and see more information about the app, some of the services that they have available within the app. You know, of course, the mobile check deposit, Zelle, transfer of money, all of that. The review. So we got a five star review with needs huge improvements right there. And you got one star does not care about customers. One star not practical. Another one star. Five star right there, very good company, one star. So it's really ranges right there, one star or five star right there for the most helpful, it looks like up front. But overall, as you see, most of the reviews are five stars right there. And you have some four coming in next and then a little bit of threes, twos and ones. And let's go to most recent. Got a payment issue, I guess, two star review right there. Great UI, user interface design, five star. Three star right there, customer service, five star. Apple Pay issue, I guess they had going on, one star. Crashing issues, one star, great app, five stars, love capital one, five star, five star, a lot of five stars, some four stars, and of course the one stars. So yeah, different variety of reviews right there, but mostly five stars right there with the capital one. So yeah, that is the capital one mobile app on the Apple app store. And that is it with the video for the top five online checking accounts with their common features, pros and cons, and some of the mobile app reviews. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Take care, have an awesome day.